the management of Commander is now being taken over by Wizards of the Coast. That's right, boys and girls. Wizards of the Coast is taking control. This is likely going to go down as one of the largest events in Magic the Gathering history outside of things like the creation of the reserve list. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here, and thank you again for joining me on my channel today as we discuss the fact that Wizards of the Coast is now taking over Commander. There is so much going on in my head right now as I thought about this during the day that it's hard to put all these thoughts together on paper, so please excuse me for any blunders or mistakes I make in today's video. Now, I did take some notes down here about some of the things I was thinking about, and I want to let you guys know, I am sure by no means is this going to be a complete list. First off, let's all agree that death threats are never a good thing. Ever. We should all be above that as human beings to each one of us, understand we're all people, we have good days and bad days. I'll leave that one there. If you're having a bad day like that, and misery does love company, it's time to step aside. It's time to take a moment to unplug and just relax for a little bit and re-gather your thoughts. Now, as far as it goes for taking on something like Commander, I want you guys to know a lot of the things I was thinking about immediately went negative. It went to a very a place where I thought a company like this shouldn't be going. Commander has always stood apart from me in the way that I look at Magic the Gathering, as ways many other players do as it was a fan-focused area where you could just go play a casual game, almost like playing an open-ended game of Monopoly. But I think things are going to change. Now, I want to explain why I think this, and you guys can agree or disagree later on. And I'd love to see everyone put some comments in the comment section, because it's a lot to take in. I'm sure, like I said, I've missed some avenues of conversation here. I'm probably thinking quite linear at this point when I'm making the video. But I look at a company like Wizards of the Coast, and they did make note, and I have recorded the entire um, announcement. It is part of the video today. It takes like six minutes to listen to the whole thing. You are welcome to listen to it or, of course, fast forward through, but I thought I should include it. It's a very important announcement. When they're talking about taking over Commander, they bring things to this four-bracketed approach, where there is power level one bracket, and that's like a, a pre-constructed Commander deck. Power 4 is all kinds of crazy powerful cards like Grim Monolith, probably Dual Lands and Time Twister and all those crazy things would be bracket 4 and other cards are in between and they'll base it on a whole bunch of concepts and designs that your deck is designed to do and that's where you'll fit into your power bracket and they leave a little bit of linear motion there where they can say, my deck is a 4 because I'm using Ancient Tomb, but it's a 2 without the Tomb, right? So if I take that Ancient Tomb out, this deck's a 2. So it's kind of understanding that it's just one card. It's not going to lopside the whole game, but I'm doing a tomb-themed deck. You guys will get it when you see the uh, the announcement. But the idea of that and the idea of the brackets actually doesn't bother me. I have lots of people out there who have told me there should actually be a point system. And this point system would be for every single magic card ever created has a point, which means nothing's banned, but it's so hard to make combinations because some cards cost so much points, you can't really do much in between. I understand that concept. I've had friends talk about it for years, and the idea of brackets is not far from the truth. Now, although I think the bracket idea has some merit to it, it also leaves a little bit of a, this is where things go negative for me, a little bit uh, of an idea of marketing. With companies like this, they can take that good idea and they can twist it saying, here are our pre-constructed decks. We're going to sell those to the customer. These are the tier two decks we're going to sell the customers. Here are the tier three decks we're going to sell the customers. And here's the tier four that we're going to sell the customers. And the tier four being mega powerful decks will cost an arm and a leg. And they'll just scale back on the price, hitting a whole new market. Hitting a whole new price level that we probably haven't even thought about in Magic the Gathering. And I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying that's where my thought process went. Now, I know they're probably going to be very supportive of the format. Wizards of the Coast is no fool. And they understand that supporting this format is good for the health of Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast as a company. They can't shoot themselves in the foot overnight. It takes time to make those mistakes. And at the very beginning, they wouldn't even take baby steps. They would just be massaging us and warming us up to the idea that they have now taken over for the format with uh, some input from the, the committee that used to exist and probably will still exist in some way as a supportive advisory committee. So they're not likely to do anything for the first year or two. It takes time. And the company is great at looking at the long term. They don't look two, three years out. They look 10, 12 years out and what they can work with 
and how they can massage the message. And that's where my mind starts playing on these things saying they're going to want to support the format. They're going to want it to succeed because that's good for their bottom line. They're going to be able to give us a centered message for the format because they, they're, they're not going to be easily bullied by other people and they're going to be just the face of it saying, this is what's going to happen. And we all have to accept it, basically, not to mention this could lead to competitive play. This could lead to different versions of different lists for different players playing. There's a lot of upside to players who want to play with banned cards who they can't play with now, but maybe in the tier four, they will reevaluate those lists at some point and say, oh, yeah, yeah, if people are playing with dual lands, they, they can play with fast bond. Oh, yeah, yeah, they can mix in the Moxin and power cards because, hey, there's so much power at those levels that's not going to make much of a difference. Guys, be ready for crazy stuff. Now, are they unlikely? I sorry. Are they likely to unban uh, reserveless cards? No, I don't think so. I honestly don't think they're going to go after things like the Moxin and Time Walk and Black Lotus. Okay, but I can see the possible reversal of some of the cards we just saw banned. Maybe not right away. Maybe a couple of years from now, after we've all gotten used to the idea. So if you've held on to your cards, you probably made a good choice. Now, when I think of the new products that a company like this could bring to bear. Some of it would be good for the health of the game for new commander players coming in. And it could work up to players who already have significant collections. We could also see new commander format cards coming out or new versions of the game playable in competitive formats like two-headed giant type style or, or things like Emperor, the three-on-threes and enter a whole new level because of the, the, the excitement players feel when they talk about and playing commander although it'll be it's a social game for the competitive side of players you might see a whole different thing start to evolve and that's not exactly a bad thing i just wonder again from that financial aspect where these prices are always going to go in the end okay because don't forget guys for wizards of the coast this is about money this is about what the company can get i know they probably care about the rules committee and they're empathizing with the situation, the horrible things that have been said and happened to. And although I didn't read any firsthand accounts, I've been educated enough to understand that this stuff happens all the time. But Wizards of the Coast, they're a company, and now they have control of a format, or going to have control of a format, that allows them to open up the doors and possibilities to many different crazy things. So, when you look at the ownership of something changing hands... The new captain of the helm is not likely to make significant changes right away. They got to evaluate. They got to check things out. Take stock of what they've just gained control of. Major companies don't usually do layoffs in the first day. It takes weeks or months for them to kind of align things. Like how many extra guys do we have in sales? How many extra people do we have doing HR? And then they start to make them linear and then ax out the ones they need to get rid of to streamline the process. Depending on how the company wants to take things in the future, I just want everyone to be aware the changes won't happen now. They will happen later. The products they'll be able to design won't happen now. They will come a year or two from now. They will come in a wave of excitement and, and creativity. And this is where Wizards of the Coast likes to take things at the beginning. And then later on, as people say, they like to shoot themselves in the foot. They'll crash this format down. And I know... From everyone's point of view, we saw so many different opinions the last uh, the 12 hours I've been reading things of how people feel about this. And most people think this is the end of days. And I don't think it is. I, I'm a positive PD on general rule of, of principle where I just I like to think things are going to work out because you don't have to follow what they say. You can still play with the cards you want. You can still do the things you want to do. You don't have to listen unless you want to, or it affects you in some way at a tournament level or at a card store level. Guys, we all get this. Kitchen table magic ain't going nowhere. But at the same time, for those players it does affect, it could mean all kinds of crazy thoughts are actually going to happen. They're going to become reality. So I want, I guess, in part to say, let's wait and see. We can keep our cynical side open, keep the radar up and going keep a lookout for all kinds of things and try to inform and educate each other. But let's also hope for the best. Let's hope things work out for, for what Wizards is going to do. Let's hope it works out for the rules committee and they still get the proper input. Let's hope players can enjoy the game the way they want to enjoy it, have a good time, and look forward to a hobby that some of us have enjoyed since its inception 30 years ago. And I intend on playing all the way to the grave. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it informative, but at the same time, I hope you see that, that ray of hope that I feel. Although I'm negative about many things, I still think taking the burden away from the rules committee so they don't feel so 
burned down and and just attacked and letting a company with basically a granite wall face take it over and at least see what they do maybe isn't a bad thing at least for now i know it's not going to go away i know once it's for now it's forever but let's hope and let's see what happens we can always just say no with our wallets in the end we can just say we're not buying it fix it Guys, thank you again for hanging out with me on the channel today. A reminder, if you enjoyed today's content, I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notification bell as I do put out new content every single day. Now here at the end of the video, I have put a recording of the entire announcement that I've actually read aloud. Um, and hopefully you guys find that informative in case you haven't seen it or you can just read through it yourself. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day today. This news is dated September 30th of 2024 from Wizards of the Coast, and the title is On the Future of Commander. The past week has been a tumultuous time for Commander fans, members of the Rules Committee, and the Magic the Gathering community as a whole. Along the way, we've seen players and fans share a diverse range of passionate opinions, far too many which were harmful and or malicious. Below and over the next few days and weeks, we'll be discussing quite a bit about Commander, starting with the most pressing. Over the past week, the conversation has escalated, culminating in unacceptable personal threats to the safety of members of the Commander Rules Committee. This is something we will not tolerate. No matter how you feel about something in Magic, it will never be appropriate to threaten somebody. Everyone at Wizards of the Coast is united on this front and we will not hesitate to take action against individuals who threaten to harm community members and or employees. This week has also demonstrated the truly monumental task that faced the Commander Rules Committee. The Commander RC is made up of five talented, caring individuals, all with other jobs, lives, that they must balance as well as manage the most popular format in Magic. It results in incredible amounts of work, time spent deliberating and exposure to the public. Nobody deserves to be or feel unsafe for supporting the game they love. Unfortunately, the task of managing Commander has far outgrown the scope and safety of being attached to any five people. So today, in partnership with members of the existing Rules Committee, we are announcing that the Rules Committee is giving management of the Commander format to the game design team of Wizards of the Coast. Commander has always been a community focused format and this move in management does not change that. While the ownership of the format may be changing, members of the rules committees and others in the community will continue to be involved and the vision for a social format will not change. We've had some preliminary discussions, sorry, conversations already about what we would like to accomplish and have some ideas on how we'll be rolling these out in the months to come. Working with the community to craft this format is critical to all of us. We have opened a new Discord channel on the official Magic Discord in the subtext of Commander underscore news channel. We will also have a weekly MTG stream talking about this tomorrow, October 1st at 10 a.m. on our Twitch stream. What's next? Well, this is still very early. We do want to share some of the things we've started working on with the Rules Committee, a more objective approach to deck power level, and additional guidance and shared language for players to find games that match the type of game they're trying to play. It isn't anywhere near finished yet, but as part of this building with the community, we're opening it up for feedback. Thoughts and your version of how this will look, think of this like an open beta. Now here's the idea. There are four power brackets and every commander deck can be placed into one of those brackets by examining the cards and combinations in your deck and comparing to lists we'll need the community help to create. You can imagine bracket one is a baseline of an average pre-constructed deck or below and bracket four is a high power deck. For the lower tiers, we will lean on a mixture of cards and a description of how the deck functions. And for higher tiers, are likely to be defined by more explicit lists of cards. For example, you can imagine bracket one has cards that can easily go into any deck, like Sword to Plowshares, Grave Titan, or Culminate. Whereas bracket four would have cards like Vampiric Tutor, Armageddon, or Grim Monolith. 
cards that make games too much more consistently lopsided or faster than an average deck can engage in. Now, in this system, your deck would be defined by its highest bracket card or cards. This makes it clear what cards go where and what kinds of cards you can expect people to be playing with. For example, if Ancient Tomb is a bracket 4 card, your deck would generally be considered a 4. But if it's part of a tomb themed deck, the conversation may be like, my deck is a 4 with Ancient Tomb, but it's a 2 without it. Is everyone okay with that? Will this system guarantee perfectly matched games? No. And that might be fine at your table. But if it gets the conversation started from a shared understanding, that's already great for any table. We would love to hear what you think about this and which card brackets you would place certain cards in. We will also be evaluating the current band list along both the Commander Rules Committee and the community at large. We will not ban additional cards as part of this evaluation. While well, discussion of the ban list started this, immediate changes to the list are not our priority. For now, the safety and well-being of the Rules Committee is the priority. What has happened this week is totally unacceptable. By working together as a team, we can shoulder the responsibility of this format and everything that comes along with it. Please stay tuned for more to come. In the meantime, you are welcome to join the Discord and discuss this further. And we will see you for a weekly MTG stream tomorrow, October 1st at 10 a.m. PT time on Twitch Magic. Which means, if you're watching my video, this has probably already happened. It's definitely one of those days. Welcome back to the end of the video. Thanks a lot for hanging out. Guys, these are the patrons, the ones who made this possible today. Because this was a whole lot of research, a whole lot of reading, and a whole lot of ideas being jotted down on paper trying to figure out exactly what Wizards of the Coast might do. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for the support from my patrons and YouTube membership members. I'll see you guys tomorrow, of course, with another video. Wow. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. Guys, this was quite the announcement today, wasn't it? Ramble and the Jamble! Um, the idea that Wizards of the Coast may actually do this right, I understand is far from everyone's mind. They just wonder how bad it's going to get. But in my mind, I say for some players who don't have large play groups, this could be very helpful and beneficial. For those players who like super high power level games, they'll be knowing, hey, I got a tier 4 deck. Bracket 4. Oh, great, I got bracket 4 too. And you guys go at it. This may be helpful. Two bracket 3s playing against a bracket 4. Who knows what combinations and crazy stuff they'll come up with, but I'm at least willing to hear them out. I mean, we can always just go back to kitchen table magic and ignore them and show up at, uh, at our local library like we used to in the 90s and just play and not listen to anybody. Make our own rules. It is a card game after all. I'll be curious to see how this all plays out. Huge news. Huge. Like, reserve list level huge. And the cards they could unband, I know, has people's minds going in a tizzy because sales on the reserve list started going up again. Guys, I'll see you soon. Crazy.